I think more from a, a female view. I'd love to know what it feels like to be off this planet. You know, it um, it's it, it feels wonderful. Um, in the moment, you almost can't believe it's happening. Uh, but when you're floating in space, there's nothing like it. And then to see the Earth from that orbital perspective, um, to me, it was truly transformative. But what's interesting is when you return back home from space, your brain doesn't know what to do with that experience because it's nothing that is normal. So it, it categorizes it as a dream. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, it really is. So, okay, so, I don't even so it feels like exactly. so you can you can imagine your the, the the best dream you've ever had, the one that you long to have again. That's what it feels like. Sure, that's profound. I've never I've never heard anyone ever explain space like that before. Thank you so much. Yeah, it, and I think that's a reason why people want to go back because just like that dream, that amazing dream that you had, that you want to have again. You, you long for it. And so there's, a, there's kind of a, a longing to go back and have that experience again and, um, and, and to make it feel more, even more concrete. Mm -hmm. Like it wasn't a dream, to remind you that it wasn't a dream. Huh. Wow, that's, that's, that's profound. And so the next thing I was going to talk to you about was it, it feels like when you leave the planet, you can almost get closer to the mystical or the mm -hmm. mystery. And... Um, you, you wrote this amazing book. I haven't read it. I haven't read it. I can't wait to read it called Earth Light. And just the title alone suggests something very poetic, creative, and then there's a science to it. And I'm calling it now maybe the mystery or the mystical. I just would love to hear a little bit more about Earth Light. Yeah, so when you get into low Earth orbit, you literally get bathed in Earth light. And that is the transformed light of sunlight. So when sunlight comes and strikes our atmosphere basically it immediately is transformed by our wonderful planet and our planet will take that sunlight in and it will absorb some of it it will reflect some of it it will scatter some of it and when you're in low earth orbit you get that energy coming out at you but you also get humanity's energy coming and life's energy right because everything is about energy and electromagnetic fields so it's not just the transformed sunlight but literally all of life is uh, like um, bundled into that and so to me the analogy is sunlight I mean not sunlight the analogy is moonlight and how when you go outside and you see a full moon rising and you're walking in moonlight how you feel more connected to the moonlight like you, you feel more connected to the moon as a result of that and humanity has had a long history with its obsession with the moon now we get to go and experience earth light and it transforms you in a way that's similar to the way you feel about moonlight but it's a thousand times more amplified because it's so much more energy and so and it's 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 um, a lot more powerful and stronger. Mm. And, and I can hear you talking from a direct experience. I can just listen to you and imagine that you're talking from seeing it, feeling it, being in it, yet we're all kind of in it in a way. Yes, and that's the thing that I realized is that we literally live in earth light, yeah. um, but we don't acknowledge it. We learn about sunlight, we learn about moonlight, but we don't learn about earth light, and it's all around us every day. It's like the fish in water. The fish is just in water, and that's just what, what it's in. So it doesn't recognize that there's this medium water unless it jumps out of it and gets a moment to see it from, you know, the air. And for us, that's earth light. Mm -hmm. We are living in it, and we're surrounded by it. We live in a world of reflected light. The only reason why we see color, which is energy again, um, is because we, uh, that's how we have developed and perceive energy, but it only exists, color only exists because of the earth. Hmm. Because color, you need that, that um, electromagnetic radiation, that light to reflect off of something in order for us to see color. Hmm. And, that, and when there isn't anything, no matter, to, for it to reflect off, you get the darkness of space, hmm. right? Hmm. And so it's only when it interacts with 
matter, material, like the earth, that you get to see colors. Mm. And so the colors that we see around us are a direct result of the earth. That is earth light. It's the earth transforming light into the colors of the world. You literally, you're giving me shivers. <laughs> and I'm so grateful that you're bringing this wisdom to us. Um, I've, been, I've been thinking about some, the true wealth that we have on earth, which is energy. Mm -hmm. And if we can access energy, and some people might go, what do you mean by that? Maybe I got a great feeling, a profound, beautiful thought, a connection to the invisible through prayer or whatever the divine, however you speak, is more wealthy or more powerful than a lot of money or a lot of stuff or a lot of status or influence. And I wonder, you know, in, from your view now of having seen it, what you feel about what I've just said. Oh yeah, e energy is everything. And, and that energy is the world around of us and how it manifests and, and that's even our consciousness and, and how we think about the world around us. And so for me, I agree totally that you're, how you, when you begin to see the world um, as energy, and how you manage your energy, how the earth manages its energy, how your interactions are about managing energy and exchanging energy. Um, we exchange energy in the form of communication and thoughts and, um, and electromagnetic signals and um, all kinds of ways, right? And the more you get in tune to the energy of um, yourself, and the earth around you and then the universe the more you're the more happy you're going to be in a, and aligned with your true purpose of being here mm. and as you speak i get that that what you brought about the color and the energy and the light how the light reflects the color and a particular flavor of energy and i imagine something like a pristine water river has more beautiful light and color than a dirty polluted one you know? That's exactly right. And so in my book, Earthlight, I talk about how humans have changed the chemistry of the, you know, the Earth's atmosphere. And so the way the Earth transforms light is different as a result of that. Mm -hmm. Same thing with water. You know, mm -hmm. if you muck up the chemistry of the water mm -hmm. via pollution, mm -hmm. you're changing how the energy is being transformed by the earth and that's earth light mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. you know and and i think that that's one of the reasons why i wanted to bring earth light down to earth is so that mm -hmm. people can get this new perspective of the world around them mm -hmm. and hopefully become better stewards of earth because they realize that that earth i refer i refer to earth as as afro gaia you know mother earth out of africa afro gaia and and mm -hmm. this whole idea that um if you you got to be in tune with the earth because it's a living system mm -hmm. and we're part of that living system mm -hmm. we create earth light just as much as the earth does mm -hmm. and and earth light is life mm -hmm. and so we have to we need to mm -hmm. rethink our interactions with the planet mm -hmm. and how earth light is changed and and um and manipulate it mm -hmm. by life and our existence mm. I, uh, it's yeah and there you feel that wealth what is true wealth and where do we find our true joy when we connect to exactly what you're saying and then in that um uh, just one or two more questions uh you spoke about the jedi in expressing diversity and so forth um, i wanted to ask you and it sounds like you've already saying it to me in embracing diversity should we start to also consider embracing trees and bees and lights? And <laughs> oh, yeah. right, exactly. No, um, what I like to say is there is no black, there is no white, there is just earth light. Ah, and those are colors worth mm. celebrating. And so, and those colors come in every form, it, 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 whether it's a rock or a tree or life it's it's all part of this living system and and the, and we get to experience it through earth light mm. we get to see it and acknowledge it and that's how we have been able to detect all of the energy around us in um, this amazing uh, way mm. so really yeah extending idea of embracing diversity beyond being so human centric also being human centric but going beyond that because if we don't we can't really embrace ourselves either if I can't embrace everything around me 
Yeah, we are um, Earthlight beings, and so Earthlight. I mean, it's all about energy, and Earthlight is the the way we see that energy. Um, well, I'm I'm just so grateful for this book. This this this. I feel like you're having a conversation with Earthlight and Earth itself and the mystery. That's how I would say you're in conversation and you're sharing your sacred conversation with us. And so go get that book. <laughs> I'm going to. And yeah, yeah, I can't wait to read it. It's on, it's on Amazon. Um, it's Earthlight. And it really is. I do believe the reason why I went to space was to discover Earthlight for myself and then to bring Earthlight down to Earth. Well, I'm, I'm super, super grateful to you. Cyan, thank you. Thank you so very much. And yeah.